Hey guys, welcome to VRAC. So, just to start off this video, tomorrow I'm having a Twitch stream and it'll have donations set up. I'm trying to raise funds for a tooth surgery I need to get extracted. So if you guys want to watch me play some Borderlands 3, stop on by, maybe help me out with that surgery. It'll be at 9.30 Central Time, tomorrow, May 12th. Twitch name is Kozark. So stop on by and we're going to have a lot of fun. Well, today, we're going to be going over the comparison on which to buy, either the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5. Now, most of the details on the Xbox Series X have already been confirmed. We've already seen what it looks like. Everything's out in the open. We do know quite a bit about PS5. We still don't know what it looks like and some other features. So we're going to go over the things that we do know and compare them and see what would be the better console to pick so far with everything announced. So to start off, the baseline comparison that we're gonna start with is going to be power. So that's the whole thing about a new generation of consoles, right? How much more powerful are they than the previous console generation? What kind of graphics can they support? 4K, how many frames per second can they do? And it looks pretty close on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Uh, it seems like the Xbox Series X will have the slight power advantage. So that is one point in the Xbox Series X's library for looking at what to get. Now I will say that it is a slight power advantage. Uh, if I look there, it was saying that the Xbox Series X looks like yeah, only a slightly few more gigahertz in or in teraflops. It can run a little bit faster than the PS5. So it does have the slight power advantage. And from there, that's one thing for Xbox, but it's so close really that it's hard to make that your deciding factor. There's a lot of other things that come into this like controllers, uh, services they offer, peripherals, backwards compatibility, pricing. We're gonna go into all of that. Now, with controllers coming up here, the PlayStation 5 has announced its new controller. It looks quite different from the PS4. I'll put a picture up here for you so you can see it. Now, the controller does seem very cool. It's supposed to have haptic feedback. So when you press down on the buttons, it'll feel different. It's not just gonna be a rumble feature like older controllers but it'll have like a force feedback on certain things, which seems really cool. Now, the Xbox Series X controller looks quite similar to the original Xbox controller. It does have some upgrades and some changes, but it's very similar. Now, the reason for this is the Xbox Series X is backwards compatible with the Xbox One's controllers, which is really nice because if you had an Xbox One, maybe another controller, those aren't gonna go to waste. You don't have to buy a second controller when buying your system or a third or fourth controller if you already have them. You get the one that comes with the Xbox Series X, plus you can use your older ones. Now, they haven't confirmed or denied whether you'd be able to use your PS4 controllers with your PS5. Since they look so different, I'm saying no. I don't think that that's something that they will confirm because it is a different controller with different options. So. I'm going to give the slight edge to this on PlayStation 5. Well, being able to use your Xbox One controllers is really cool. They really didn't do many changes. Not that I think that the Xbox One controller needs very many changes, but the, the, the complete redesign of the PlayStation 5 controller just looks so cool. And it looks like it'll feel great in your hands when playing a game. So one, one point for Xbox, one point for PlayStation 5, based on aesthetic alone, really. Now our next step is gonna be backwards compatibility. Both consoles will be backwards compatible with the previous generation, but only one of them will be completely backwards compatible, which in my opinion is very, very important. Uh, when, you, when you go to buy a new console, you really are wanting to just get an upgrade on what you had last time, unless it's something Nintendo where they're, they're completely different turning into motion control, but even the Wii had GameCube backwards compatibility. So you're really wanting to get that upgrade, but say that you have a back catalog of a couple of games you bought you haven't played yet, or 
you really enjoy some of the games that you played in the past and you want to play them in a better resolution, better frame rate, and you really don't want to just crowd up your your entertainment system with a bunch of different consoles. Well, that's what makes backwards compatibility so important, showing that we appreciate your past purchases and we want you to still be able to use them when you purchase new hardware. So the Xbox Series X will play everything an Xbox One can play. Every Xbox One game, every backwards compatible 360 game, and every backwards compatible original Xbox game. That is huge to me. I love retro games. I love the Xbox 360 quite a bit, and I love my Xbox One. Being able to play all of those with improved graphics, all on one system, it, it makes it so much better to just be able to have that one thing that plays it all. It's the same reason I love the Retron 5 so much. It saves so much shelf space, and you get everything with an improvement better than the original hardware. Well, not in the in the line of Retron 5, but with the Xbox Series X, yes, everything's better than the original hardware. They run better and look better. So Xbox is doing that for the Series X. The PlayStation 5 will be backwards compatible, but I've seen a ton of false information on this. Fake news. Uh, the PlayStation 5 will not play PlayStation 1, will not play PlayStation 2, will not play PlayStation 3 games. I've seen everywhere, and it's hopeful thinking from people that really want it, because it would be amazing that people are saying that it'll do this. But it won't. PlayStation 5 will be backwards compatible with a select few PlayStation 4 games. At launch, the, the people that are making the PlayStation 5 have said that they've looked at the top 100 most played PlayStation 4 games. And they're looking at that in terms of hours. Uh, basically, they're looking at who logs in the most hours on what games. And the games that have the most amount of time being played, they're saying the top 100 of those, most of the top 100, will be backwards compatible on PlayStation 5. Now let me reiterate that. Most of the top 100 most played games will be backwards compatible on PlayStation 5 at one at, at launch. That means that there's not even going to be 100 backwards compatible games, and it might not even be ones that you enjoy because they're the most played games. What that means is I've seen Xbox One's online most played games. Uh, Witcher, Grand Theft Auto V, Minecraft, Fortnite, Call of Duty... It seems like a lot of games that uh, just have a lot of online play, which is nothing wrong with that, but those are probably going to be the most pool that they grab from the place from the PlayStation for uh, the, for backwards compatibility. And it kind of sucks because most of those games, while awesome, are probably already going to be getting ports to the PlayStation Five. Grand Theft Auto V, I could totally see them doing that. They make so much money off of it. Minecraft, you know that there's going to be a, a port to the PlayStation 5 from there. So it seems like kind of a waste. Now, I know that there's going to be uh, some exclusive titles. Spider-Man, you know, maybe Horizon Zero Dawn, Bloodborne. Those will probably be backwards compatible on PlayStation 5. And that would be amazing, because a lot of those games I haven't gotten to play, uh, being that I own an Xbox. Now, I have played Bloodborne in quite a bit, but I haven't gotten to play Spider-Man or Horizon Zero Dawn. That gives me a reason to want to buy a PS5. Now, there's quite a few other games on PlayStation 4 that I still really want to play. Being that I don't have one, uh, PlayStation would make a huge impact if they said that the PlayStation 5 was completely backwards compatible with the PlayStation 4, because then not only do I get all the PS5 games that are going to be coming out in the future, I don't know any of those yet, though. So the fact that you're buying a console based on what could be coming out, we know there's going to be great games, but there's games I could play right then on the PlayStation 5, and that would be a big point in PlayStation's favor you know if i buy a playstation 5 at launch i can go through the back catalog of ps4 exclusives that i've never played and then when the ps5 games really start churning out i'll be able to play those too unfortunately no so 
the point is going to go to Xbox here. Xbox is getting a huge advantage by being backwards compatible with not only every game on the Xbox One, but a bunch of 360 and some original Xbox games. That is awesome. So Xbox has it on that end. Now, price. Neither of these consoles have come out and officially said what price that they're going to be at. But there's been some heavy rumors. It is well known that PlayStation is having a hell of a time trying to figure out how to price the PlayStation 5. With all of this pandemic going on in the world, all of the chips that are needed to make the PlayStation 5 are in very low supply. And it's costing them a lot of money to get them. So costs for making these consoles are really high up right now. There have been some people that have been saying the cost of the PlayStation 5 is going to be closer to 600 and that that's going to be their release point, 600 or 650 which that would really hurt them in my opinion, especially in a time when a lot of people are out of a job and a new console is something that, especially with you know launch window games, there's not going to be a lot to play for it. So it's going to be a very hard decision for somebody to pull the trigger on a large price point. Uh, that's the rumor price for the PlayStation 5 is about 600. Now we move to Xbox. Xbox Series X rumored price is 499. That would be huge for Microsoft if they were actually able to make their more powerful console a hundred dollars cheaper than the competition. That could be it. I mean, yes, games are important. Services, peripherals like VR, uh, backwards compatibility, it, power, it's all important. But when you go to the store and you have a set amount of money and you look and you see that the Xbox, which you might know to be the more powerful system, is $100 cheaper than the PlayStation 5, and you could play all of the Xbox exclusive games that you might have missed out on if you had a PS4, that could be the thing that causes people to pull the trigger on Xbox over PlayStation 5. So Xbox gets another point for potential pricing, okay? That would be huge. A cheaper console by $100 is a big way to seduce Sony PlayStation players over to the dark side. Now, speaking of services and peripherals, I'm going to list a few things here that Xbox has going for them and setting up and that PlayStation has going for them and setting up. PlayStation has PlayStation VR. If you like virtual reality games, PlayStation is the only place to play them for home console players. Xbox isn't even competing in that marketplace. They don't have a VR unit that you can hook into your console and play like war games or, or immersive, you know, scary games and stuff like that. So right away, PlayStation gets a point because the PlayStation VR is going to be forward compatible with the PS5, meaning that you can play your PlayStation VR on your PS5. And there's rumors that in moving on from VR, because Microsoft isn't even competing in that area, we're going to look at services like Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Now. Xbox Game Pass offers over 100 games for $15.99 a month, or $14.99 a month, which includes Xbox Live Gold, where they give you free games every month, and also Game Pass for PC which does offer some different games. Now, PlayStation has PlayStation Now. I will admit, I don't know much about it. When I had a PlayStation 4, I was never interested in PlayStation Now. The choices in games didn't seem too great, and the price point wasn't that awesome either. So, when you compare the two services, really, I'm going to leave that up to you, the viewer. In my opinion, from what I've seen, Xbox has the better amount of games. They do allow for uh, first party brand new titles to go on the service immediately, which is a great thing. I don't think Xbox or I don't think PlayStation does that with their. In my opinion, Xbox is going to take the subscription side. Now, that's up for you to decide. I admittedly have not used PlayStation Now too much, but it didn't have the appeal to bring me in. It didn't have the games available for it that I enjoyed. Now, I will say that normally PlayStation does seem to get better free games every month for people, but Xbox seems to have the better subscription-based uh, library. 
being that you can play games like Halo Infinite or Gears 5 or Gears 6 whenever it comes out. Um, just with your subscription. And that saves you $60 right there if you're wanting to play the game anyways. Now, when looking at all these things, we can really see the big difference between PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Now, I will say that the Xbox Series X has already shown all of its cards. We know everything about it. We know everything except the price. A lot of the launch titles for both of them look to be the same. Um... But the PlayStation 5 still has cards in its hand. Does it have a Royal Flush? I don't know. But me as a consumer right now, I don't see what else it can do. They've already said that it is less powerful than the Xbox Series X. They've already said that it won't be as backwards compatible as the Xbox Series X. I myself, uh, VR is cool, but it's not a whole selling point for a console. In my opinion... The Xbox Series X is the console to get. You can use all of your controllers, all of your games that you already own. You can play everything on Game Pass for a cheaper price than buying it when it first comes out. And then get a physical, physical copy if you're a collector later on when they're cheaper for those first party games. Because they normally go down. Things like Halo, Gears, you can get it four years down the road for five bucks. So two years down the road sometimes but xbox really seems to be pulling ahead in this console generation now when the playstation 5 is fully announced i will create another video comparing the two and see if my opinion has changed i really like what xbox is doing this console generation the xbox one they fell flat on their face and playstation dominated them and i think that they've really learned their lessons from all of the moves that they did wrong during that console launch. They're really showing how much they care about the people that have invested in the Xbox brand and invested in their software and hardware. And they're doing so by allowing you to keep those things and bring them forward. Now, I will, I will touch on the fact that they said for the first year there won't be anything on Xbox Series X that you can't play on Xbox One, which means there's no Xbox Series X exclusives. PlayStation 5 will have games that you can only play on PlayStation 5, not the PS4. And I think, is this a bad thing? Are they not giving people enough incentive to purchase the Series X? Actually, I'm starting to think that it's a good thing. I don't plan on getting an Xbox Series X at launch. In fact, I might wait six months. But during that time, I'll still be able to get the games that I enjoy, like Halo Infinite, on my Xbox One, and then... When I jump to the Series X, I'll truly be able to see just how beautiful they are compared to the original. It'll be awesome. It'll be a great experience that I can play all those games again in better fidelity. Now, I will say one thing. I did see that the Xbox Series X is upgrading to HDMI 2. HDMI 2 seems to be a technology that allows for better bandwidth through the cord so that 4K and everything runs a lot faster and better. I don't know if PlayStation 5 has that. I haven't been able to see anything on it, but we also have not gotten the full announcement. That is just another thing that Xbox is doing right this generation. I'm really excited for it. I'm purchasing the Xbox Series X so far. PlayStation very well could change my mind, but I don't know if they have enough cards left in their hand to do so. Tell me what you think. What console are you guys excited for? What console are you guys gonna purchase? Really appreciate you watching VRAC. Please tune in tomorrow night at 9 for my stream. I'm going to be playing Borderlands 3, and I really need surgery on my infected molar in the back. It's causing me a lot of pain, and I have till the 21st to raise enough money to get the surgery done, because that's when I have it scheduled. So really appreciate you guys watching. Tune into the stream. We're going to have some fun and interact, and I hope you guys have a great night.